All right, Heihachi Mishima isn't dead. I don't know why yet, because I haven't played through the story. Unfortunately, Omen Combo is dead. Even though we get the double backflip, the recovery is kind of crap, so we can't combo off that. Kind of sucks. And sadly, he also doesn't say, oh yeah, anymore. Kind of sad. So Omen is basically just an ender now. I didn't even do the proper Omen there. It's basically just an ender now for Oki situations after certain heat dash moves and certain knockdown moves. It does kind of suck. Also, his Tekken 7 playstyle did get nerfed. Kind of. 1-1, one, one, for example, on block is now minus 5. I think this was plus 1 before. Down forward 1 is now minus 5. Also got some pretty good follow-ups, though. But he basically can't be stuck to his opponent with fast buttons anymore that are relatively safe and not as minus. He also took away some of his tracking, like I think Fold Fold 2 doesn't track as much anymore, which is kind of nice in a way, so you don't, you don't eat this randomly out of nowhere. But he did get some new stuff to kind of compensate, like back 4 is ridiculous, that knockdown is insane. On block, minus 8, counter hit, full combo. Oh, I do a Kazuya thing by accident, but yeah. That move is really good. They also gave him a demon pull. He has forward forward 1 plus 2. Oh my god, can I demon pull? So not used to doing a 1 plus 2 of the wave dash. I keep getting hit by But yeah, they've given him a demon pull. Which kind of fits in with Heihachi if you look at it. He's a mids. Heihachi is known for having strong mids. And of course, there's the stances. That is, just a, that is just a crazy move, I'm not gonna lie. So they've kind of kept him simple enough to pick up and play. Like, you can have you can have a lot of fun with him just kind of playing away. Simple game plans, things are gonna work. They even gave him, like, simple combos that actually do quite a bit. Like, that's pretty rewarding for a pretty simple combo. So the barrier of entry with the character isn't super high, but the better your opponent is, the more you have to think about what you're going to do. You'll realize this character isn't brain dead, even though he has all the stances and things, he's not constantly going to be doing dumb shit. Now, if you eat an attack and he goes into a stance, then yes, mix up time, you're going to, you're going to get blasted. And that's, that's when he seems kind of rushed out. But you'll realize that he isn't just brain dead like that. For example, if your opponent blocks, you're kind of screwed. Every option you do after this, besides blocking, you will lose. Even the, the unbreakable grab, you can get hit out of it. So you can't actually be brain dead mashing with this character all the time. But he is still ma massively rewarding. Get the combo. I've been doing this for hours. Ah, I dropped it. No. As you can see, the character is still massively rewarding. So, you can have your simple game plans and stuff, have fun with the character, but the more you learn, the more rewarding he is. And I think that's like the best way they could have done the character. Simple enough to play without being brain dead and super rewarding the more you learn. Now, of course, you don't have to do something as crazy as the combo I just did there before. It, it's just kind of flashy, I'm not gonna lie. We don't have open combos anymore, we have to do something. Or even something like that. 96. He does have the easiest triple electric combo in the game, though, I have to say. You can't do some goofy stuff with fluted starts, though. <laughs> <Like this. laughs> that's just really dumb to me. Anyway, that's kind of the uh, quick overview intro for the character done. Let's get into the seven pages of notes. So, let's go over some of his good moves, starting with Jab, of course. Has Pretty decent reach. Decent. 
Of course, 10 frame, decent reach, plus 8 on hit, and on block, plus 1. Pretty nice. You also have 1-1, one, one, which is plus 6 on hit. Like I showed earlier, minus 5 on block, which is kind of a nerf to him. And of course, you can hit confirm the 2 input. And of course, he has the 10 frame wall splat. 1-2-2. Two, two. It's actually more useful now because of Fujin. So, plus 4 on hit. Minus 12 on block. But if you hold down, you go into Fujin. Still plus 4 on hit. And now becomes minus 9 on block. So it makes it safer. At least I gave the string a use. One back two. Not natural. Counter hit it is though. As you can see, minus two on block. Plus eight on hit, which is really nice. And again, with one back two, you can hold down to go into Fujin. But the frames don't change. Next, we have two two. An 11 frame high mid, plus three on hit. On block, it's minus eight. Can be kind of useful to throw this out to set up your down forward one. Or even your down forward two, if your opponent tries to swing. Next, we have three two. A 15 frame double mid, minus two on hit. And our block is minus 13. Block Kazuya. Minus 13. But you can go into Fujin. It becomes plus 9 on hit. Which is kind of nice. And on block... Minus 2. <laughs> From... This, this is minus 13 if you don't go into Fujin. That is nuts. To go all the way down to minus 2. 1 plus 2! Cards. Drop. Great mid. 12 frame mid, by the way. Knocks down on hit, which means, of course, the game would give me the stage reset. This does wall splat. Ah. Block minus 10. Still a great mid. Forward 2 2. This is a 15 frame high into mid. It, it basically works like you're. Your 3 2 in a sense. Same frames as well. You can go into Fujin as well. Like minus 13 there. Becomes minus 2. It's practically the same frames as this. I no clue why though. Next we have Full Width 3. 18 frame mid. It is super useful in combos. This move actually uh, somewhat took enough. This would knock down before, but now it's plus 9 on hit. Which is pretty damn good. On block, minus five. But on hit, this becomes ridiculous because you can go into Fujin. On hit, it guarantees Fujin 1 1. So basically, forward three on hit is a heat engager. And of course, on block, if you go into Fujin, it becomes minus two. Forward four, 19 frame mid, plus seven on hit, plus four on block. You can go into Fujin as well but your frames don't change with this one. However, with forward four, if you hit someone crouching, you get plus 15 instead, which means this is full combo. Forward one plus two, the chrome dome, 12 frame high, plus 14 on hit. This move has a lot of follow-ups, by the way. You have your down forward one, two. Oh my God, if I'm fast enough, You can get forward forward, one plus two there as well, which is, yep, you can get really fast with it. You can get your quarter circle forward two as well. Like there's, there's a lot that happens there. If you're in warrior instinct, that becomes full combo as well. On block, Chrome Dome is minus 14. Next we have down forward one, a 13 frame mid, plus seven on hit. Like I showed earlier, minus five on block, which is a nerf to the character. But it has good follow-ups. Down forward one, one. Plus four on hit. Minus two on block. Down forward one, two. Plus three on hit. This is minus 13 on block though. But you can charge the second input. Full charge, it becomes plus one on block. Blue spark deals more damage. And you do have a 
Oh yeah, it's also minus nine on block if you blue spark it. There's also a gold spark version, which is a, an exact just frame. If I can get it. There we go. That deals even more damage. It's also still minus nine on block, yeah. Down four with three, one plus two, one. A 15 frame, it's basically political storm on hit, knocks it down. It doesn't wall splat, I believe. Does have a blue spark, though. Which I can never remember where you're supposed to blue spark it. There. But yeah, blue spark version, you get more damage. Unblock, the full thing is minus 15. The down forward 3 part by itself is just minus 6. But if you do any part of the follow up, it's minus 15. So you can kind of use it as a whiff punisher, kind of like Lydia. You put it whiff something, you just smack them with political storm. Down forward 4 is a decent 13 frame mid. I say decent because, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of stiff. It's not the best rage, but again, plus 5 on hit, minus 6 on block. And you can hit confirm the two follow up, which is pretty damn good. This also knocks down and this wall splats as well. Leads to full combo. The full thing is minus 12 on block. Next we have down one, the hammer punch. <laughs> Plus two on hit. On block, this is minus nine. You do have the follow up two. Plus nine on hit. Still minus nine on block. However, if you hold forward, you go into Raijin at plus 13, which is kind of nice. And you go from minus 9 on block to minus 5. Next we have down back 2, Ashi. The Aishamon, 23 frame low, plus 6 on hit. They did kind of nerf this a little bit. I think it has more pushback now. The opponent is further away from you, so you can't... Yeah. You can't really do down back to it to down forward 4 anymore, but... Yeah, plus six on hit leaves you encroach for a bit. You can still, like iron hand, yeah, quick iron palm your way out of that. A quick iron fist, I think it's called. A block though, minus 18, so death. Down back three. Three fast, 16 frame low. Not really fantastic reach, but it's something. Minus two on hit. So you're not getting plus frames from it, but it's at least a, a decent low that you can use and you can still move around after. And block minus 13, but it's still it's still decent. Next we have back one, 14 frame mid, plus four on hit, minus nine on block. Again, you can use this as a decent poke if you're feeling lucky. You can just throw out back one four, but that's minus 13 on block. Next we have back three, which is a pretty fast homing high attack. Uh, range wise, this is kind of ass though. Like it. I still don't understand how this is a homing attack, by the way, but it's a homing attack. <laughs> but yeah, 14 frame high homing attack, plus two on hit, as you can see. On block, this is minus nine. Does have follow ups. We have back three, three. On block, this is minus 12. And you have back three, two, which is minus one. But it's double high. That's why you have. A mid follow up as well. And this plus eight on hit. Next we have back four. This, this is such a massive move. Holy shit. But yeah, you do not want to whiff this because you will die. But holy shit, that impact. <laughs> Kazu just goes flying. Holy shit. Yeah, 18 frame mid. Knocks down on hit. Of course, wall splats as well. Decent damage. And block! Only minus eight. So you really do not want to whiff this move. But as long as you land it on hit or on block, you're fine. It's crazy because the counter hit launch. Holy shit. Ah, drop the combo. What? Hundred and four <laughs> with with no install, no heat, no rage. The fuck all. It's just a hundred and four, and I don't even do the combo properly. Holy shit, this move is nuts. Ah, oh, I had gold rush him on too. Damn it. But yeah, that move is nuts. Back one plus two. The wrath parry. Holy shit. It is a heat engager now. The hit is it's it's really slow though, so you 
kind of want to land a parry with this. Unblock. Yeah, the cars are not going to block this. <laughs> but it's minus 11 unblock. Up back to 18 frame mid punch parry. Knocks down on hit. Also wall splats. Unblock. Minus 9. Up forward 1. 24 frame mid power crush. Knocks down on hit. Of course, those will be as well. And only minus 13 on block. Up forward 2. 1. Heat engager. I'm, I'm so sure that was his sidestep 2. 1 in Tekken 7. But yeah. Up forward 2. 1. 19 frame. Double mid heat engager. Minus 11 on block. Can use it in combos as well. Like, I'm pretty sure. Up forward 4. Kind of slow at 24 frames. But this is a mid homing attack. Knocks down on hit. You do get follow-ups here. Oh. oh my god. Man, no moment. What the hell? You can run up and stomp here. Boss, not yet. You can run up and stomp. Man, no moment. What? There we go. <laughs> you can open from that as well. I don't know why I wasn't getting it. Maybe I'm tired. I've been doing this for hours. Uh, there's also Pulse Splats. So, again, powerful mids from this character. Unblock, minus 9. Forward, forward 2, the demon got uppercut. 19 frame mid launcher. There's also bounce. You can use that in combos as well. It's pretty cool. Minus 16 on block. Does it look like it has a ton of pushback? I, I feel like it took it 7 and more, but maybe that's me misremembering. But yeah, it is launch punishable on block, but with that pushback, gotta be pretty difficult to punish it a lot of the time, especially online. Forward, forward, three. 20 frame mid launcher. Minus three on block. I'm pretty sure Cassius is minus six. So this is really good. Forward, forward, one plus two. 13 frame. It's not really going to be a 13 frame because of the inputs you're doing, the forward, forward input. But 13 frame mid heat engager. It's, it is basically a demon pull. Like that's, that's clearly what it's meant to be. I'm just still not used to doing 1 plus 2 input out of the wave dash. I'm used to doing it in the wave dash because of Kazu. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, that's going to take some getting used to for me, but... The old man's wave dash is looking kind of nuts at this game, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you can wave O into forward, forward two. You have forward, forward three. The hell sweep that launches on counter hit by the way. And you just straight up quick iron hand. Yeah, his wave dash is looking pretty damn good. And now you have to boot. You have demon paw. And for some of his crouching moves, that are really good, as you just saw there. While standing one. Still a really good move. Quick Iron Fist, I believe it's called. 13 frame, get up. Really gotta get it at 13 frame unless you are already in the couch. But you can wave dash into it, and it doesn't work the same way as other punch moves from a wave dash. For example, if you want Kazia's twin pistons, you would have to wave, 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 and then cancel your wave dash into the move. Oh my god, I'm so tired. But yeah, see, like that. That's while standing two. But I had to cancel the wave dash into it. Yeah, there we go. I am tired. My execution is not gonna be all that good right now. But with this move, you actually don't need that. You just do the crouch dash and one, and you're going to get the move. So again, the old man's wave dash pretty nuts. And of course, guaranteed follow ups if I can. Omen! Jeez. But yeah, knock down and hit. Wall splats as well. Minus 14 on block, though. While standing two, 18 frame mid, plus 8 on hit. On block, this is minus 8, I believe. Oh my god, Kazia, please block. Yeah, there we go. Minus 8. On counter hit, though, gives the same effect as Chrome Dome. So anything that works off Chrome Dome is gonna work off. Of this as well, on counter hit. 
While standing for four, the tsunami. It is neutral on hit. Right, 11 frame double, double mid. First hit by itself, plus eight on hit. And block minus three. Both hits neutral on hit. But of course, it is launch on block. If you only do the tsunami. If you go into Fujin, it becomes minus nine. So tsunami is not launch punishable on Heihachi. It's also because of tsunami that I was getting this goofy shit <laughs> with Fujin. This is nuts. Also, on hit, if you go into Fujin, it becomes plus six instead of being neutral. Also, in Crouch, we have full Crouch 2, so he has a 15 frame crouching launch now. Minus 14 will block that. For some reason, I thought this would be a launch punishable, but I guess not. Combo wise, still haven't figured out everything yet, but. Seems decent. Side step 2, 23 frame mid, plus 9 on hit. Minus 9 on block. With this, you hold forward as you go into Fujin. So instead of minus 9, you become plus, minus 5. On hit, you become plus 13. The counter hit does knocks down. If you go into Fujin. That means I'll have Fujin. Raijin, you get the guaranteed follow up there. Also, wall splats are counter hit. I think that in general just covers like most of his good moves. Of course, I didn't include like health sweep and stuff in there because I mean it's a health sweep. <laughs> good if it hits death on block. But if you pay attention, it's again it's all about the mids with Heihachi. He has powerful mids. Always had powerful mids. But... The addition of the demon paw and this back four is kind of nuts for him. I'm not gonna lie. So I decided to add this section in for newer players because I've seen people call that at, at electric and that a perfect electric. And that's not what's going on there. <laughs> Honestly, this could be an entire video on its own, but I'll try and make it as quick as I can. In Tekken 8, Heihachi has four wind guard fists and three thunder guard fists. So let's start with the wind guard fist. So that there is a wind guard fist forward. Neutral, down, down, forward, and then two. The, the, the hit effect shows up electric sparks, but it's not actually at electric. That is an electric. Again, forward, neutral, down, down, forward, and two at the same time, and you get an electric. Now, when you go into Fujin, you get a different type of electric. This is a special mid electric that's 15 frames. That auto bounds on hit. That's not the same as this electric, which launches. Now in Tekken 8, all the Mishimas basically have the perfect electric input, and they're able to do a perfect electric if you can do the input fast enough. So the perfect electric, well, one of the inputs is forward, neutral, and then immediately down forward plus two. Uh, the controller gonna be kind of ass here when I'm trying to do it. Yeah, one frame off. So right there, forward, Neutral, immediate, down, forward, plus two. That is a perfect electric input, but what I did there itself was not a perfect electric, it was just an electric. Because those numbers shouldn't be four, three, and five. They should be one, one, and then it doesn't really matter what the next one is, so long as I press down, forward, two on the next frame. They all have to be on single frames. So while we have the input, it does make it easier to do. The perfect electric itself is just the fastest version of an electric. So while that is still an electric, that's just a faster version of it. And it's not the fastest because I can't get single frame inputs consistently on this D-pad. Now as for the omens, Heihachi in Tekken 4 had three Thunder Guard Fists. Well, I should have said as for the Thunder Guard Fists actually now that I think about it. The normal one... Get it. Yeah, there we go. The normal one, which is done the same way as a wind guard fist, so you see no electric sparks or anything like that. A blue spark version, which we called Omen, which he's had this entire time, but it was kind of a mix because there was a red spark version as well. The red Omen, that was in Tekken 4. And that and it had different properties. I think it was off the red Omen in Tekken 4 that you would actually get Hell Axel immediately after that. You could literally Omen into Hell Axel. 
but over time like the red omens properties and stuff just became part of the normal omen anyway so we just had the electric thunder god first that we called omen but tekken 8 in a sense it kind of brought back the red omen so again you have oh my god i can't do normal thunder god first really yeah you have normal thunder god first and then if you do it like an electric you get the omen thunder god first and that right there if you do the perfect input you get what i'm calling the red omen basically in this in this game though it it doesn't do anything it's literally just more damage like i think the damage here is this does this does 30 omen does 33 and red omen which is forward neutral down forward omen. That one does 38. However, from Raijin, you do get Red Omen. You get the 38 damage one. And this is an actual Red Omen. It looks way more red than... Oh, can I do the input? Yeah, it looks way more red than this one where you do the input manually. So I'm basically just calling it Red Omen, but basically each Thunder God first in this game is literally just there as an end. Yeah. We don't have the Thunder God first combo anymore. Yeah. And I'm not Thunder God first for that. So honestly, it still doesn't mean much with the, the having the Red Omen and stuff. It's nice to have Red Omen back. But again, it just means slightly more damage as an ender. Now let's go over the Punishers. For 10 frame, of course, we have 112, the Flash Punch, the classic. At 11 frame, we have 2-2. 12 frame, you have Guts, Wrath, 1 plus 2, or you have Headbutt, Chrome Dome. Depending on the scenario, you would you would use either one. Out in the open, you're going for this because more damage. Near a wall, you would do you would do Wrath to get Wall Splat. Now, for 13 frame, you have quite a few options, actually. You have Down Forward 1, 2. You have Down Forward 1, 1. You have Down Forward 4, 2. And you have Down Forward 2, 1, but that's more so for when you are in boss mode ultimate Heihachi, because that's gonna launch. At 14 frame, you have back one four. At 15 frame, if you think you're fast enough, you can electric, or you can political storm. Either way, you're getting some damage. You're getting a lot of damage. Now, as for wild standing punishment, he doesn't have a ton of options. So starting at 11 frame, you're going to have your wild standing four four. That's also gonna be for your 12 frame. 13 frame, you have wild standing one. 14 frame as well, you're gonna use while setting one. And then at 15, you now have full crouch two. So this is crouching down forward two. Now let's go over the stances. Heihachi has two stances now. You have Raijin Kawai and Fujin. So let's start with Raijin, because I think that one's gonna be a bit easier to get through first. So from Raijin, if you press one, you get the red omen, which is a 17 frame omen. It is slightly different to doing the omen manually because it's saying it's faster but then again you're doing it for the stance but yeah red omen 17 frame mid on hit gets you nothing unless you're at the wall then you get a wall splat but it's awkward the recovery is terrible yeah you can just barely get an attack in after that unblock it is minus 11 so it's the same as an omen, basically. Next, we have Raijin 2. Does move kinda nuts, I'm not gonna lie. 17 frame, homing high. On hit. Launches. Yeah. Damage. Damage. <laughs> hey, Archie deals with damage. But yeah, launches on hit for full combo. And block. Doesn't matter, it guard breaks. It doesn't matter what this is on block. So guard breaks for plus 10, so you get a flash punch after that, but it's it's scaled. Yeah, so at the wall, you're not getting a ton from that, but it is something. It's a guard break combo. It's going to be scaled terribly. Raijin 3. It's basically your down three. It's a 22 frame mid that knocks down for plus three. 
unblock. This is minus seven. Yeah, minus seven. But it is slow. You know, it's kind of slow, especially out of a stance. Yeah, you're probably going to get interrupted from that one. Next we have Raijin 4, which is Hell Sweep. <laughs> so you get all of your Hell Sweep options after that. You also have Unbreakable Throws. Done with the generic throw inputs. This is kind of sad. Broken Toy was just a throw that Heihachi had before. That was a lot better starts. Also, the theme frames, by the way. It's not as fast as your standard throws. Now, your ways of going into Raijin Sans outside of just manually going into it is down one, two, hold forward. You have back two, but you have to hold the full thing. So, not something you're going to be getting all the time. And if you do, you, you get a decent chunk of damage from that, I'm not going to lie. And of course, I step two, which is what I was using to show it. So I think most often you're probably going into the stance from sidestep 2 and down 1-2. Two. I would say for Raijin though, you're, that, yeah, that's your main ways of getting into it, is down 1-2 or sidestep 2. And in the stance you're mostly going to be using either 1, 2 for the, the massive launch and guard break, or the throw itself. But yeah, the throw. You're probably going to use that over your down three and your house, although you could try to help sweep your opponent as well as part of a mix, but they already have to deal with a 17 frame high and a 17 frame mid. But in the stance, basically, if you feel they're gonna duck, you're using one. If you feel they're gonna stand at guard, you're using two. And if you feel like they're going to try power crush you or something, that's where the throw comes into play. Next up, we have Fujin. The stance goes away quick, quick. Compared to Raijin, Raijin, you just stay in the stance constantly as much as you want. And Fujin actually exits the stance pretty quick by itself. But this is the stance you're going to see most often. Fujin 1-1. One, one. 12 frame double high heat engager. Of course, forward 3 into Fujin 1-1. One, one. And on block, this is minus 2. Yeah, minus 2. I'm pretty sure you can duck the second hit. Because you also have Fujin 1-2, which is high mid. It is slightly delayable as well. Like there, it is slightly delayable. So if you feel your opponent is going to try a duck Fujin 1-1, one, one, you can hit them with Fujin 1-2 instead. And block, minus 30. Fujin 2, the hidden electric. <laughs> which is what it's called. It's called hidden wind, what electric wind god or something. What a crazy name it is I have to give this. The Praying Electric. 15 frame. Auto bounds on hit for a combo. And surprisingly enough, it's minus 10. This is a special mid... Oh, but I'm saying special mid, but it's a mid electric. That launches, basically. It's minus 10 on block. Which is odd. I thought it would be at least like minus 12 or 13 or something, but I guess not. Fujin 3-4 is basically hell out. Fujin 4, 18 frame low. This is basically gets a stomp, but without needing your opponent to be on the floor. You just get it up whenever you're in starts. I kind of like that. But as you saw, minus 4 on hit. And on block, minus 14. Now we have the big move. Fujin 1 plus 2. Like, uh, it's an 18 frame homing mid power crash. It's like this, this move basically does everything. <laughs> It's probably going to be one of the most used moves from Fujin. Like, it has the reach of this as well. Like, holy shit. Like look at that. But yeah, they, like, like you saw the properties there. Homing, power crush, wall break, wall blast. It, it's doing almost everything. And minus 13 on block. Fujin as well has a throw. Again, unbreakable. Leaves you at plus 7 right in front of the opponent. Well, almost right in front of the opponent. If you're in heat, though, and you do that... It auto takes you into Raijin at plus 8. But if you hold back, you can just take your plus 7. Also from Fujin, if you hold down forward, oh, well, actually, I think you just press down forward. Yep. You get a crouch dash. 
Which again leads into the shenanigans I was doing. With the wild static 4 force. <laughs> but that's kind of crazy, actually. Dude. That's kind of nuts. But I don't think these stances are too oppressive. Like, on hit, of course, yeah, you're gonna have to hold the mix. Like, come on, plus 13. But on block, you are hitting Heiachi out of majority of the stuff. Like there. Everything you do with Vujin is losing to this. The stance is not unbeatable. Even at minus two. And that's not even everything. For example, you can step. So again, the stances aren't just brainless constant plus frames pressuring you over and over you can deal with it now let's go over the old man's heat state because it's actually pretty important each time you each time you activate heat you're getting kind of like a, a charge or a token i don't really know what to call that honestly but towards your install when you've done it three times you get access to a boss character like literally you get access to a boss character Activator again. So when you have three, so this is only going to happen the earliest round three, where you're going to have your install, and you legitimately get a boss character. Holy shit! We'll go over Warrior Instinct in a bit. The heat state itself actually does some good things for Heihachi, Auto Electrics, and. So omens, of course. You get up forward for one, deals way more damage. But on block, remember we were minus nine. Now we're plus two. Down three gets an extension as well. This is the two input. Down three, two. Again, more damage. And on block. This goes from minus seven to neutral with a lot of pushback. And what's crazy about this is Fujin gains the auto parry. It's basically the old back one plus two parry. Now let's go over warrior instinct. You hear that little, little effect in the background? Holy shit. This is basically a boss character. You can only do this once per match. Which is good, because it's kind of nuts what this does for Heihachi. So when you have it available, you press 1 plus 4 to activate. And on hit, it deals 10 chip damage. On block, it actually, I don't think it does anything on block. On block, I think it's... Yeah, nothing. But it does give you plus 2. On hit, plus 21. And that's just activating it. That's not even doing anything. That's just you activating it. Also, for some reason... There's wall splats. I have no clue why. But it wall splats. So already just activating this, you can get a whole lot of shit done. Oh, I don't have spring kick set. What's a ball breaks at activation? Holy shit. But because of it doing that, the scaling is actually pretty bad. So what do you gain after going into Warrior Instinct? Well, 1-1-2 now deals more damage and literally flings your opponent across the screen. Like, holy shit. Remember, that is a... <laughs> that is a wall splitting 10 frame move. Doing that. One, back to two. 
So that is technically Heihachi's rage drive from Tekken 7. But only in Warrior Instinct does it act like the rage drive. Where it actually gives that spike into the floor. I thought he was going to just have that all the time. It's only in Warrior Instinct. Omen follow up after. Holy shit. Damage. So I don't think it's useful on a stage like this where there's walls. You would rather just get the wall combo. Or on like bigger stages like the Colosseum and stuff. You can use that. One plus two. Rock. Hey, listen to those, man. Holy shit. More damage and more knockback. Holy shit. Oh my god, this character. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. Down forward 2 1. Becomes a launch on hit. So this is a 13 frame launch now. I mean, stuff like that can be done. Oh, fuck off. Forward, forward too. Deals more damage. Has an insane effect as well. Forward, forward three. Deals more damage. Yep. Also, we get broken health sweep. For those of you that don't know what broken health sweep is, let's turn off warrior instinct for a second. When you block a health sweep, about the stagger minus 23 they die the broken health sweep is basically the old health sweep what we had in the older games did you see that he just goes through your block he does not care this is like Tekken one two and three that's, that's the hell sweep you're gonna have to deal with with this bad as a warrior instinct. It is nuts. That's the broken hell sweep. No stagger and it's minus 14. Also, when you're in warrior instinct, your Raijin Omen actually deals more damage. It does 15. So that becomes really damaging. Your Fujit Electric as well gets more damage. I think it's four more damage. So you're dealing with way more damage overall when Heihachi goes into this form. And what makes it more crazy is if you actually pay attention to what happens when he hits you with a combo. So let's actually turn this off for a second. So right there, we did 96 damage. But 46 of that 96 is recoverable health. Let's go into Warrior Instinct. Okay, there are blue sparks, so we got 99. But if we got the 96, look at how much recoverable health is left. There's barely anything. That's what makes this form kind of nuts. Is he's hardly leaving you with any recoverable health. On top of that, combos become much more damaging. And with almost no recoverable health as well. So yeah, those, those are just some examples. Imagine you're getting hit for 112 and you have 11 recoverable health. Holy shit. But not to say those combos are easy to do and they are the easier versions. I'm just doing those ones because they look fancy. An easy 102. So... He has some simpler combos that still deal massive amounts of damage, but when you're in Warrior Instinct and you're barely leaving your opponent with any recoverable health, that is just kind of nuts. And God, it's just it's just a once per match scenario where you have this menace running around in the match. But overall, I feel like Heihachi is decent. Like I said, he feels like he has a simple game plan, so he's gonna be easy enough for people to pick up and play without knowing like the, the crazy technical shit. So 
Oh my god, I can't even do crazy technical shit like an electric car. My fingers. But yeah, that's Heihachi. Just insane damage with pretty powerful mids. I don't think he's some super top tier character though. I think he has top tier damage, that is for sure. He deals damage. Especially when he's in Warrior Instinct and you can't recover that damage. But I think overall as a character, he's not like super up there brain dead busted character level. He's just uh, a strong A tier, I guess, is what we would call him. Because again, he might have some easier to use tools, you know, the demon boy and stuff, you have for being ridiculously powerful as well. But then again, he is still a Mishima, he's gonna have weakness to side step left, side walk left. Like I showed you before with the stance stuff, you, know, you can step these things as well on block. So they aren't completely busted. Of course, if you get hit, it's mix up time. But he's not rushing you down with that kind of shit. Like, again, the nerf to Tekken 7 Heihachi means he can't be stuck in your face with fast buttons and being relatively safe. Or, like, less minus than this. You know, minus 5, he can't really keep pressuring you there, but... Minus 5 again. So he can't be stuck on you, rushing you down. That's more Reina. Heihachi is going to be played differently. So again, I feel like he's going to be simple enough to where you can come up with some kind of simple game plan. You know, simple game plan. Very simple game plan. <laughs> Very, I've got to do this in matches. Very simple game plan. But yeah, I feel like you can play him with a relatively simple game plan and still have fun with him. But again, when you start getting into the, the more technical stuff with this character, Oh my god, if I can do electrics properly, come on. That's when you're gonna start pushing a lot more out of the character. Like, the stuff I was showing here was still kind of simple in terms of combos and things. It can get more in-depth. So again, barrier of entry not too high, skill ceiling still ridiculously high. Perfect way to do the character, honestly. Again, I just want to do this in a match to someone. Holy shit, this is... This to me is just dumb. It's like really dumb. The fact... Ha ha, Lupe while standing 4-4. But I feel like he's going to be a really fun character. He's not going to be super over overpowered. He's not destroying you at plus frames constantly into 50-50s. He has to be a bit more smart with it. But I think he's going to be a really fun character. And his combos are stylish as hell. I'm not gonna lie. You saw me do some of them. I love these combos. But overall, I feel like he's just gonna be a fun character. Anyway, if you liked, leave a like. Just like if you didn't. And I hope you guys are enjoying playing him. Or enjoying getting loops with my standing for.